Here, I will explain the setting of expansion units attached to the CPU. Let's use this unit as an example. Now I'll create a new project. When a new project is created, this dialog window opens. The operation recorder is a necessary function for debugging later. Click, yes. This dialog window opens. If the PLC and the PC are connected via USB, the unit configuration can be loaded from the PLC. Today, let's click, yes to set manually. This is the unit editor. The unit to be used are configured here. First, drag and drop the unit to be used. Position the I.O. unit and the analog input unit by dragging and dropping. For the analog data, the data allocated to the unit are stored in devices called R or DM. These devices can be automatically allocated from the menu here. The setting of each unit is displayed when double-clicked. The numbers for DM and R can be also manually allocated from here. In addition, you can set items such as the IP address of the CPU unit, an input range of the analog input unit, and scaling on the analog unit. In addition, you can check the hardware settings such as the size, weight, and consumption current. When setting is complete, click OK to reflect the settings to the project. After unit setting is completed, register a device comment before entering a program. Double click the menu and register a device comment on this screen. First, register the preset device comment to the device allocated to the expansion unit from the menu. Check that all units are selected with a check mark and click here. Then, the device comment is automatically registered to the devices allocated to this analog unit. This KVSIR32XT is an I.O. unit. Therefore, register the comment manually. For example, register a comment to input and output respectively like this. Now, let's actually enter a program. In KV Studio, if a device comment is registered, a list of candidate devices are displayed by entering just a part of the comment. Thus, setting device comments as explained reduces the work hours for programming. This is the special data of the analog input unit automatically registered. Let's store this special data to the variable. This is an unregistered variable. Therefore, it can be registered as a variable from the right-click menu. Now, let's transfer this program to the PLC. Then, I will introduce the unit monitor. Unit monitor is a function to monitor each function of an expansion unit. You can start the unit monitor from the right-click menu of each unit here. For example, this is the unit monitor of the I.O. unit. In case of the I.O. unit, the I.O. status can be checked in a list. When the switch is pressed, the lamp starts to glow. In addition, 
The lamp glows when the toggle switch is pushed up. Switch the monitoring item to output. For this output, you can actually turn on the output by double clicking the item. For example, you can see the lamp glows when this section is double clicked. Now, I will introduce the unit monitor of the analog input unit. Right click the analog input unit here to start the unit monitor. In the case of the analog input unit, the analog data is displayed as shown here. You can see the analog data change when the potentiometer is changed. I have introduced the unit monitor of the I.O. unit and the analog input unit here. All units such as the high speed counter, motion unit, communication unit, and so on have the monitor function. As you can see here, because the PLC is in program mode now, no program is running. Even without a program, you can check whether I.O. and analog wiring are correct if the unit setting is transferred. Now. Set the PLC to run mode and actually operate the program. This switch indicates this device. This output lamp is the same as the lamp above this switch. You can change the analog data by turning the potentiometer. When the switch is turned on, the lamp glows. The analog data is stored in this variable. Now, I will actually turn on the switch and turn the potentiometer. When the switch is pressed, you can see the lamp is on. You can also see that the analog data are stored to the variables when the potentiometer is turned. The amount of stored analog data reflects how much the volume was turned. Next. I will explain about the forced set reset function. Return KV Studio to editor mode and add one line to the program. As you can see, the program to turn on the lamp when the switch is turned on was added to one line. Let's transfer this program to the PLC. The transfer completed. This device is operated by this toggle switch. And the lamp above this toggle switch is for this device. The lamp glows when the switch is pushed up. Now, the device is turned off by pushing the switch down. The forced set is a function to turn on the output to forcibly turn on the lamp while the device is off. Right click the desired device and execute forced set from the menu. Currently, the execution condition for this output is not on. However, you can see the lamp is turned on while this output is on. Forced set is used to forcibly turn on the coil even when the execution condition is not on. On the contrary, forced reset is used to forcibly turn off the coil even when the execution condition is on.